one little break. We are back now with the founder of Tomorrow. Welcome Eitan Butler, who's going to be interviewing Galliano Tiramani, founder of Boxable. Gentlemen. Hello, everybody. Um, Eitan Butler here, chairman of Dalmore Group, and I'm here with my good friend, Galliano Termani, who is the founder of Boxable. Boxable is the exciting and revolutionary company that is changing the industry of real estate manufacturing and housing. And uh, just before we get started, just full disclosure, Dalmore is a, is a broker dealer, and, uh, and Boxable is a client of ours. So this isn't a, a recommendation or an endorsement to purchase any securities. Um, although these, I'm, I'm a huge fan personally, uh, as I know so many of you guys are as well. Um, so Galliano, good to uh, good to connect again. And um, I wanted to start by just kind of, you know, learning a bit more about your history, what you're about. You're a super interesting guy. And your, and your family is also, your dad, you know, super interesting, really interesting history. I want to kind of hear kind of like what the last 10, 15 years were like for you that kind of like led up to where we are today. First question, I think my mic, I may have dropped it during the dance. So is my, is my mic okay right now? No? Let's see. How's that? I need some, some technical assistance. <laughs> We do, we do. <laughs> Is this thing on? Is this still out? Yeah. Hello. All right. Okay, yeah, I think we're good now. So, yeah, let's pick up where we left off. Well, so I think we started a little early. So we did start a little early. Catching up on our time. Yeah, that's right. Not yet. Hello. There we go. Right, okay, we're this. back. <laughs> That's much better. So, sorry about that. Uh, when you come on stage, if you're going to dance, just test your dancing, you know, rehearse your dancing beforehand. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, great to see you, Eton. This is, you know, our, uh, our investment bank. Uh, absolutely amazing. Highly recommend to any uh, founders that are looking to do crowdfunding. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, Boxable, we are a company trying to dramatically reduce the cost of housing through our technology and our factory-built room modules. Um, but, you know, you asked about my, my background uh, starting off, and really my background is just nothing to do with building construction at all. It's, it's kind of entrepreneurial startup stuff, so I've had a few uh, successful businesses and uh, many other not successful ones, but... Uh, one of the bigger ones was back in 20, about 2014, started, actually started a Bitcoin exchange, did really, really well with that, very exciting business, especially back then when Bitcoin was so new. And then um, after that, I uh, started that out in Connecticut and then eventually decided to move to California and saw what was going on with marijuana. And this was right around the time when they were going from medical uh, into recreational legalization. So really exciting, crazy industry to get involved in. So I dove into that, uh, you know, head first and ended up uh, with pretty big operation doing uh, marijuana farming, um, hash oil production, wholesale distribution, um, you know, lived out on a farm in the middle of nowhere with, with my family. And uh, while I was doing that, I started working on Boxable on the side. And, you know, eventually realized uh, only going to get so far in life selling weed, Boxable is a really massive opportunity to actually have a, a huge impact on the world and, you know, hopefully help millions of people. So uh, decided to take the leap, took my family, moved to Vegas and, you know, ran full speed and 
now we've been in an absolutely massive factory producing houses uh, for about a year now. Wow, that's quite a, uh, quite a journey. Um, I have a 17, almost 17-year-old 17 son, his name is Gal, who is an engineer, he's an entrepreneur, and I enjoy working with him. And I know that, that um, you know, your partner, your know, co-founder is your father. Um, tell me about that. How is, how is working with your dad, um, you know, building this next chapter of what you guys are focused on? Yeah, you know, uh, working with my dad, really amazing. I mean, you know, couldn't have, have dreamt of being able to hang out with my dad all day, working, uh, especially now that I have kids, I kind of understand, you know, what it means. Uh, he's um, an engineer with a background in intellectual property licensing, where for the past 30 years, he's had a business of inventing stuff, patenting the inventions, and then kind of selling those inventions. So he's had a lot of success in that. And we kind of came together and decided to be the operators of this business, uh, which all started from his invention. So working with him is really great. We have really complementary skill sets. He's more on the design and engineering side, while I'm, you know, a lot of business uh, uh, marketing and, and other things like that. So pretty cool. Uh, we've worked together a, a few times in the past. Uh, back when I was in, you know, high school, I used to spend a lot of time at his, at his office, uh, and then we kind of reconnected later on after, you know, those other businesses I mentioned and are, uh, you know, doing Boxable now. And, and how did the how did Boxable come to fruition? I mean, what was was it was it your idea? Was it something you, you and your father were, were talking about for a while? How did you guys decide to to kind of get in the space? Yeah, well, actually, the original idea came many years ago when Paolo actually tore down the childhood home that I grew up in, and he rebuilt um, a, a house on the property, but he used modular construction. So traditional modular construction, where you have these wide loads that ship in the factory, and they're built with lumber frame, wood and nails, that's uh, how we built that house. And when he did that, he just saw all the problems with building construction and got the idea to fold the house up initially. So then sometime in, in 2017, when I was in California, and I think he was uh, just moving from Connecticut to Vegas, we started talking about the idea again and decided, you know, let's give it a shot. So we at first just created a little website, put it out there, started marketing with some, some renders, started getting some interest, and eventually we got our big break when the uh, builder show in Las Vegas, which is a really big trade show for building construction products, invited us to bring a casita uh, or bring a, a house out to the show. We didn't actually have casitas back then. We had uh, nothing. So we got invited to the show, and we had a meeting and said, are we able to, to do this? Should we, should we agree to it? We said, yeah, let's, let's do it. So you know, we, we agreed to deliver this house to the show. It was like six or nine months. And uh, then we went and figured out how to build the first prototypes. So we built the first prototypes, which were actually not casitas. They were bigger. 40-foot uh, units, and we delivered those out to the builder show, and, and people got interested, and things continued to kind of uh, ex accelerate from there, uh, up until, you know, a, about a year ago when we turned on this, this first factory. So the first factory is a 170,000-foot building. We've got several hundred employees now. We produce houses every day, and uh, it's been a really exciting journey that kind of keeps accelerating, and of course, we have really big expectations here and really big plans uh, for the company. We think that we can mass produce housing at a scale and a speed and a cost that the world has never seen before and probably have a, a really big impact. Fascinating. And why did you choose equity crowdfunding, you know, Regulation A, rather than explore more, I guess, traditional sources of financing? You know, uh, when I started, I was just kind of looking around in the dark, never having raised money for anything before. You know, both Paolo and I had funded our, all our own projects, but with Boxable, we realized, you know, the amount of money we would need to uh, achieve this was absolutely massive, and we needed to bring in uh, outside investment. So I started looking around to traditional investors, venture capital, all that, and really just didn't like kind of the, the reception I got. I didn't like the, the, the terms that were proposed to me, and I started noticing what was going on with equity crowdfunding, and at a certain point just said, you know what, let's give this a shot. Worst that can happen is it, it won't work, and, and we'll move on. But you know, sure enough, it, it did work, and we did the initial 
uh, Reg CF offering and uh, started selling. And all of a sudden, we were like, wow, this is really powerful. And we kept you know, doubling down and doubling down. And um, it, it just gave us so many benefits and, and really not a lot of downside. We had, you know, of course, the ability to kind of retain full control and, and creative direction of, of the company. Uh, all the investors that we ended up with became basically cheerleaders, uh, promoting our company, bringing awareness to it. And then the marketing that we had to do to get the awareness to find the investors ended up paying off in other areas. So we never even considered all that, but now we have over 150,000 potential customers on our wait list and just like crazy amount of interest, resources rolling in, you know, a, a significant number of our employees found out about us from the social media marketing and they ended up, you know, coming in as, as a result of, of that. So it just, it pays off like to, to have the, the awareness of the company and we wouldn't be here today. If we had gone the traditional route and not had such an emphasis on marketing and getting the word out, we would not have been able to grow uh, to where we are today. We would not have had as many resources as we do because not as many people would have known about us. So I absolutely love it. And you know, we're gonna continue down that path for sure. Amazing. And you know, one thing that's really unique about um, your offering and we were able to kind of achieve that, that was a, a really good example of this idea of co-listing, of, of syndication, right? It's, it's being able to um, house your offering on your own website and, and therefore be the sole beneficiary of your own marketing and promotional efforts, right? But at the same time, um, we were also able to kind of build a, a syndicate, right, amongst some of the other marketplaces out there. Um, tell me about that experience. Yeah, so there's a number of different ways to raise money with, with equity crowdfunding. Um, there's platforms out there where you can list your company and get in front of their audience, or you can do it directly on your own website. Uh, you know, with the help of, of companies like Dalmore, that's uh, totally easy, easy to do, and, and I think they even have their own uh, software that will enable investors to come in and invest on your own website. So we started out on a crowd for crowdfund platform and then quickly realized that if we kept the investors on our own website, we could really control the messaging. We could control the marketing to them. We could retarget them with pixels, uh, email communications, and it was much more effective. So we you know, transitioned from the, the crowdfund platform onto our own website, and that just continued to be successful. But eventually I realized that this was a numbers game and we needed to get people to find out about us because if people weren't gonna find out about us, then they weren't gonna invest. So we said, all right, let's take another look at the, at the platforms. They have these big captive audiences. And so I, I reached out to basically all of them and said, hey, we're gonna do this offering. We'd love to list on your platform. And we ended up getting um, Start Engine and Republic both to agree to uh, put us on their platform at the same time, as well as listing on our own website. And I think that just really helped more people find out about us so that we could get more, you know, volume of investments faster. And, you know, those guys are, are really great. And it's, you know, one thing to go and do an equity crowdfunding directly on your, on your own website, but a platform's a great way to do it as well. Uh, there's a little more hand-holding there, especially if you're just getting started and want to kind of test it out. Yep. How important is marketing and promotion for the success of the offering? And how do you, how do you guys approach um, your own uh, marketing of the, of the offering? Yeah, you know, uh, marketing is everything because, you know, if you don't have that, no one's going to know who you are. So, of course, you have to start out with a, a, great, a great project, a great company, but you really need to get the word out. So, for example, one of the reasons I'm wearing this hat right now is not for safety. Uh, it's just to kind of capture people's attention and maybe get them to stop scrolling on their phone for, for one second and pause on our video so then the algorithm can pick it up and, and push it out to more people. So you really need to have a company that can be understood by you know a, a, a group of people and then you need to get in front of them and show them what you're doing. So the way I think about it is you, you need to get views. You know, do almost anything you can to get the views. And you know, then once you have that traffic, you want to capture those leads through um, getting them to input their information, you know, their, their email, their phone, maybe with a, a social media pixel. And once you've captured those leads, then you start 
remarketing to them. So, you know, if you take a look at Boxable stuff online, not only are we, you know, working really hard at this business, but we're doing stuff to keep it interesting and keep people entertained and keep them finding out about us. So, you know, we do uh, funny stuff. If anyone has any funny ideas, let me know and, and pretty much we'll go and, and do them because we're just trying to spread awareness so that we can get more people on our team. And it's just worked uh, so well for us. I think we're one of the more successful, you know, equity crowd funds out there. And, um, you know, that's all due to, you know, mostly organic social media marketing where we were able to get in front of people and really show them this is what we are, this is what we're doing. And then, you know, beyond just that initial marketing, you know, we've been uh, successful in getting the business up and running, producing houses, selling houses. So, you know, once you get their initial attention and then you come back and deliver on your promises and achieve milestones, then things kind of start to, to snowball and it gets uh, better and better. Because, you know, when someone scrolls through their phone and they see this unfolding house and they stop for a second and say, oh, that looks really cool. I want to look at this unfolding house video. Uh, then they go in and they start looking at what else you're doing. And they see, oh, there's a lot more to it than this. And there's a lot more great stuff going on. And then you can really start, um, you know, selling to them, whether it's an investment or, or a product or you're looking for uh, a supplier or employees, uh, all of it, it all pays dividends with, with marketing. And so I think you guys have raised over 75 million so far from retail investors. Is that is that where you're at now? Yeah. So the total uh, raised amount is, is um, over, I think, 140 million dollars right. from um, combination of Reg D, uh, Reg Reg CF, Reg A offerings. Basically, working through all the various crowd uh, SEC exemptions that allow you to raise money through you know general solicitation to people. Yep. And, uh, you know, that's been something that has, you know, really the sole method for funding the company to date. And new, for new entrepreneurs out there, I mean, you, you guys are a super success story in the crowdfunding industry. What would be your advice to an entrepreneur considering equity crowdfunding for their business, whatever it might be? I would say uh, absolutely in most cases, it's a, a great way to go about it, especially if you have a product that a large group of people can understand and relate to, uh, or you have access to you know, a community that's super relevant to your project. Uh, definitely consider it, look into it. Pretty much all the reasons not to do it that I've heard, uh, I, I can't really take seriously. It's just like so many pros to equity crowdfunding, not a lot of downside. And at the end of the day, you know, uh, what do you have to lose? When, when I first started doing the equity crowdfunding, I just thought about it and I said, you know, worst case, no, no one buys the investment and we close it down and we go somewhere else. But, you know, really happy now that we decided to take that leap and, and give us, give it that try and put ourselves out there kind of to the public because it's just been uh, massively, you know, a, a game changer for our company. And, and how, va how valuable do you think was all the marketing that you've done that kind of goes into marketing the raise? And how has that impacted the business, the opportunities, the exposure that, that Boxable has out there today? Um, I think that, you know, that has multiplied our trajectory and our success, you know, many, many times over. It's, it's incredible because if we had just taken money from, you know, uh, a regular you know type of investor that didn't require marketing we wouldn't have been focused on the marketing and the word wouldn't have gotten out about us we wouldn't have this massive reach on social media we wouldn't have these millions of social media impressions we wouldn't have a hundred and fifty thousand person wait list for our, our product uh, we wouldn't have you know people all around the world interested in this um, and just nonstop opportunities rolling in. It's become kind of a, a marketing machine where we're just farming all these resources and leads and opportunities that just roll in through our website, through social media, through the phone, you know, every single day. So it's, it's been great. And what is next for Boxable? Well, uh, to, to step back a little bit, the idea behind Boxable is that we are going to mass produce housing on a scale that no one's ever 
seen before or, or, or that's been possible before. Of course, you know, everyone's familiar with housing issues all around the world, so, you know, housing is, is too expensive, it, it's not available. And the current methods are just simply not a solution for that. No matter how much money you throw at the traditional building methods, you're never going to be able to build fast enough to meet demand. So when we looked at building construction, we said, why aren't we building these houses the way we're building everything else? And that's on a factory assembly line, using mass production, using automation, economies of scale, all these efficiencies you get from an assembly line that are well known and proven in every other product, whether it's an iPhone or a, or a television or a, a sneaker, assembly line is how it's done. So we looked at it and realized the reason was the buildings are too big to ship. They're huge. If they're too big to ship, then you can't build them in a factory and you have to build them on site. And of course, there are guys out there building buildings in a factory, but generally they're shipping these wide loads, which are very expensive to ship. So they kind of lose all their efficiencies back to that shipping cost. So our core innovation was we're going to fold these houses up so they can ship as a legal highway load and not be oversized and not incur that extra fee. And all of a sudden, that's going to open up our shipping radius and allow us to mass produce in a factory. So we've gotten in and we've uh, not only dialed in that shipping innovation, but we've changed how we're building the building, the building materials used, the manufacturing methods. We've been able to streamline everything to produce houses uh, faster than, than anyone else. Uh, and, and you know we're right now just kind of proving that out. So we have this first factory. Uh, it's actually, uh, we just got our second building. So it's a total of 300,000 square feet of manufacturing space. We got in there and we're just dialing everything in, all these new building materials, all the ratings we need, and making the case for that bigger level of scale, where we can get to the level you see with the automobile makers, whether it's like a Ford factory or a Tesla factory, these plants are massive. They put out usually one car per minute. They have huge bulk purchasing power, huge levels of automation, you know, extremely efficient, uh, the, the Henry Ford assembly line style of production. And that's something that we can, we feel boxable can apply to housing and no one else really can. So the next step for us is we're looking towards a much bigger factory. Uh, we're starting off in this 300,000 foot production facility where we're projecting to build, you know, thousands of homes every year. But that's not what we need to really achieve these economies of scale so that we can push the price down and the manufacturing speed up to the level where it's an absolute game changer for the whole planet. So we're looking forward to a next step of getting into basically an absolutely massive assembly plant, uh, hopefully, you know, right down the street here in, in Las Vegas, where we can start cranking out, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of houses and just have a huge impact. Uh, and another thing I'll mention, you know, people may see the Boxable Casita product on our website, which is kind of a little tiny house, but the Boxable Vision goes far beyond that. We have a building system here where we think we can build most buildings most of the time by stacking and connecting different room modules together. So the Casita, the little tiny house, that is a starting point for the company to really dial things in. But the grand vision is really most residential building types on, on most of the planet, whether it's a multifamily apartment building or a single family residential, we think it's a fit for the boxable um, system. And we think we can do that in a way that's compatible with assembly line mass production to get the highest quality levels, the, the lowest cost, and the most rapid deployment, and hopefully, you know, increase the supply of housing to the point where we're able to actually push prices down and make housing uh, massively more affordable for the whole planet. Well, uh, well, we'll end with one question I wanted to know. You know, you have an intense electric personality, and I think everyone that sees you recognizes that. And, um, you know, what drives you? I know success. I know you've had success over and over and over again, you know, with the different projects you guys have done in the past. You're fortunate and blessed to be working with your father, and you really enjoy that as well. But what, what type of spiritual practice, what type of energy work that you, do you do that kind of keeps you in, in, the, in your condition with that electricity and that positive outlook that I think is completely connected to your success? How would you kind of describe that? Yeah, you know, I, I really just absolutely love working. Uh, I don't have too many hobbies. I basically, you know, spend time with my family and then work. And uh, it's kind of addicting for me and I, and I, and I really love it and uh, wouldn't, wouldn't have it any other way. 
you know, if, if I ever try to like, you know, go on vacation for a few days or something, I might become a little depressed. I need to get back and go back to work. Um, and then of course, when you have as much action and excitement as we have at Boxable on this, you know, crazy uh, growth trajectory, it's just, it's nonstop action. There's just so much crazy, exciting stuff going on every day. And at, at the end of it all, we're on a mission to just have a really big impact and make a, a really big change. So that's what I want to do. I don't want to do anything small at all. I want to go insanely big and just have a huge impact on, on as many people as, as possible. And that's what's going to make me happy at the end of the day. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. It's okay, he can fix it. Boxable is doing all the right things, again, for all the right reasons. If you're sensing a trend here about housing, that's because housing matters. And when people come together as a community and they invest with their pocketbooks and with their hearts, great things get solved. So for now, we're gonna take a 30 minute break. Please join me back here at two o'clock. We're gonna discuss more things about housing with Mr. Dutch Mendenhall, founder of Rad Diversified, and an interesting conversation. So we'll see you in 30.